gotten in a little trouble in, in his past, but he always survives because he's the great Bob Ryan. Bob, welcome. Good to talk. How are you today, pal? Okay? Very good, Chris. All right. What is, the, what is behind this EEI suspension day tomorrow for 12 hours? Fill me in. Let me hear. The thing that the tipping points were a couple of incidents recently. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, first being that uh, a, an auxiliary host named Alex Reamer, he's not the primary guy on the morning show, uh, Kirk uh, Minahan and, and right. uh, Jerry Callahan, right. but he's an adjunct guy, a third man in, as you, if you will, uh, in referring to the Tom Brady video, uh, Facebook uh, documentary uh, in which his five-year-old daughter made an appearance, he uh, had a very snarky remark about her, do I repeat it? Yeah, well, we we talked about that. We know that. We know what the, the tight end said about Don Yee. So and then and then it was Christian Fourier who thought he was being funny, and and by the way is a very affable guy, likable, uh, uh, you know, very very pleasant personality to deal with. Not a you know not an edgy guy at all. Uh, but he was thought he was going to be funny, and he mimicked. Uh, and, and we reference to Devon Borges' suspension on the Boston Herald. Uh, he mimicked uh, Don Yee, uh, who was Brady's agent, uh, in, an, in a you know silly Asian accent uh, of him reading something or other about uh, Borges that he made up. And Don Yee, of course, is a Californian uh, who uh, mm-hmm. is a native Amer- is an American by birth, and who is never and, and, and is not uh, does not speak in an in Asian accent. That. And in this tenor of these times, uh, neither of those things went over very well. But it's not in a vacuum, Chris. Uh, It's an edgy morning show, not unlike, uh, I think, Callahan's idol, who was Imus, and and, uh, in fact, his actual idol was Bernard. And uh, he, he worshipped that show at one point, I, I think I, I safely say. And uh, they have had an edgy show in which they uh, do as much politics uh, on occasion as sports, and, and it's all right wing. And uh, they have offended a lot of people over the years, but they also have, uh, are the number, uh, have a great, uh, terrific ratings. And um, a lot of people have been down on them, but, a lot of, but they have a faithful audience. And, of course, they flourished in this era of Trump. Their audience is that audience, a lot of it. And um, so uh, there they were, that's hanging out there, and they just, they just went too far. They allowed themselves to go too far. So uh, the station is uh, – there's a, a female columnist at the Globe in the business section uh, who is a uh, Chinese-American, uh, and, and she uh, has launched a real attack on them uh, and basically is calling out sponsors. And they have lost at least a half a dozen major sponsors in recent, very recent days. Uh, so they're having, they're having a serious effect. And now finally the station has called this uh, moratorium on programming. So from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow, I guess it's best of. I don't know what they're going to do or test patterns or something because everybody who is in the employee of the station has been mandated to appear at a day-long sensitivity training. All right. Now, do the Red Sox, I know they, I know they were very down on the Adam Jones thing last year. I know Henry. Uh, now, uh, uh, listen, maybe he wanted to change the Tom Yorkie Way name a long time ago. I never heard about it. Maybe you're, maybe Henry's putting pressure. They, they do the Red Sox, so there's a big yes. business relationship there. How much of the, and don't forget, Henry owns the Boston Globe, so you got to keep an eye keep an eye on that too. You work, you know that better than anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, is there a situation where the Red Sox have put a lot of pressure on EEI to get Jerry and Minahan, uh, you know, basically under control? Is has this been going on? Um, Sam, Sam Kennedy, who was the CEO, succeeded Larry Lucchino in that uh, regard. Uh, has come out and saying that the Red Sox interests must be protected, and they, he is very concerned about the drip. And yes, he would like them uh, to uh, change their uh, ways. Yes, the Red Sox have weighed in on an official way that they are unhappy with the tenor of that program. Well, uh, uh, now, in your eyes, Bob, and you've been around a long time, and you know radio shows. Uh, you've been a guest on a million of them, so you know the, you know the radio shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, in your eyes. Are the is the morning show of EEI? Do they cross the line? Yes, I, I, for me. But then again, so much of it is because of the politics, and but they do they will cross the line, and and uh, uh, I think and I think they uh, you know it's one reason why I, I'm not a listener. 
uh, I, I, I eat this in very, very small doses, and generally only when uh, something big is happening, newsworthy, uh, that, and sports that I feel I need to have an idea of what people are saying about it. So yes, I will tune into either one of. We have two stations. We also have uh, with Sports Hub ninety eight five, and. Um, so, with just a gentler show in the morning, they have a duo named Toucher and Rich, and and they uh, they are not edgy at all. They're 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 easy to listen to. But these guys come at you hard, and and they come at you uh, from from that point of view, and uh, they're they're not they're not afraid to offend, and uh, uh, it's worked for them up till now. Uh, so you think that is, now? How are they going to handle this? This is a big wake up call. Are they going to come back all of a sudden, nice, soft, and easy, or are they going to stay uh, on the mission and be rug- rugged? What's your take it's on that? Be interesting. That I don't know because the two people in question are uh, are the very forthright people. Jerry Callahan, who was an excellent writer for the Herald before he went full time into radio, uh, as uh, uh, is pretty strong personality. The other guy, Kirk Minahan, is a, a, a very odd duck in it, that he doesn't give a you know what about anything and says uh, he, he he's liable to dig his feet uh, i mean i don't know uh he's liable to dig his uh, you know feet in, in and, and say uh you know, i'm not changing one iota if you don't like it get rid of me he I, I i he of the two he would be the more likely to to uh go off the deep end and and you know and not submit at all I, of the two, I'm not saying he's going to take that path, but if one of them were to take that path, it would be Minahan rather than Callahan, I believe. Uh, and I go on that show all the time. I actually went on during the Super Bowl as well. I was down on Brady for what he did. Brady should not have blown off that interview. It wasn't there. Now, I, it seems like they have a good relationship with Brady, yep. uh, but, and they didn't say that about Brady's kid, so I was down on Brady, so that's why I went on. Now, if from a standpoint of Adam Jones, now they have claimed to me on the air many a time that they have tried to talk to some Somebody who could confirm what Jones said walking off the field in April, and they were not able to get that confirmed. Is that true or not true? Well, that's their story, and they're sticking to it. And no one knows. I mean, this is the problem with this particular. That they they seem to be the leading the charge on that. Uh, I, I, I think that in general terms people are willing to take Adam Jones at face value more than they well, he's are. Been a classy, they are he's, been a, he's been a classy kid for the rest for his They career. are the outlier. Not, not, and and uh, that's their story and that's their position, but it is not uh, the, the common belief is that Adam Jones was telling the truth. Alright, that's number one. Now, the second thing is Henry. Now, you know, Henry's in tough territory owning that newspaper. We'll get, you can comment on that, but I mean all of a sudden now, I mean, the Red Sox have a relationship with EEI. I have a problem with changing history too. All of a sudden now we've got to change the name of Yorkie Way, which has been uh, uttered in that era for 100 years, but now all of a sudden in this era of political correctness, we, we have to change the name? What's your take on that for a second? Let That's me hear your take. That's a very interesting one because uh, a lot of people have risen to the defense of Tom Yorkie, uh, pointing out uh, uh, a lot of individual acts of... of uh, well, how, about uh, the, how about the Jimmy so, Fund? Should we start there? Well, for the, the, yeah, well, they, they inherited the Jimmy Fund. from the, the That was started in 1948 by the Boston Braves, and when the Boston Braves moved to Milwaukee, they inherited the Jimmy Fund, and they have done very well by the Jimmy Fund. I mean, they have been very tremendous benefactors of the Jimmy Fund over the years. They're the most important entity uh, that the Jimmy Fund has in its, uh, in its repertoire is the Boston Red Sox. Well, we got to give Yorkie credit. We have to give Yorkie credit for that. He owned the team yeah. at the time. Yaki owned the team, and Yaki stepped right up and continued and, and, and enhanced the, the, the uh, support that the Braves were able to provide for it. Yes, uh, the people will tell you there are stories about individual kindnesses that uh, he extended to uh, people of color uh, down on his, uh, literally, he had a plantation in, in, uh, in South Carolina where he lived for most of the year uh, uh, when he wasn't coming up in the summer months for baseball. Uh, there were other individual acts of where people can, are coming to his, uh, you know, his rescue, if you will. Uh, he was uh, charged with some by some people as being the voice that rang out at Fenway Park on the infamous tryout for Jackie Robinson and the other two players in 1945. Get those N words off the field. He wasn't even in Boston at the time. So where, if that really happened, it wasn't Tom Yawkey. Uh Tom Yawkey, uh was slow. To, you know, they were the last team to integrate. There are oh people are showing uh, coming up trying to prove and, and, and you know, yeah, I'm just sitting back and reading it that uh, there were attempts to sign uh, certain uh, uh, black players during the 50s that did, that fell through. Uh, did they try hard enough? No, I don't think they probably did try hard enough if, less, if they didn't get it done until 1959. Uh, although the Yankees didn't get it done until 55 with Ellie, but that's four years. That still beats them by four. So um, it's a lot of new evidence is being uh, uh, assembled. John, 
John Henry made a dramatic statement about this is ghost, this ghost has troubled him and all that. It was a little, a little melodramatic, a little over the top, uh, and, and people are rolling their eyes. All right, John, you didn't have to be so quite so dramatic, and uh, if this thing really bothers you that much, uh, you know, okay, fine. But um, it, it's, it's going to be a tough call uh, whether uh, you want to strip uh, his name down from, from, from that uh, street. Uh, he was a philanthropist. There's no question about that. Uh, and uh, he's, he's got a, uh, a, a lot of good things that people will say about the, the legacy of Tom Yawkey. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. I, I, if I had to vote, I would say I don't think it's necessary. Oh, I don't think it's necessary either. I don't know enough about Yorkie like you do. I'll read this new Yorkie book. I'll get a little sense of it. Yeah. But but I'm with you. Back to EEI for a sec. Um, management's in a tricky spot, Bob. What do you do? You, you hire these hosts. You want ratings. You want, uh, you want to be number one in the market. You want advertising. You want uh, a little edge with your radio program. And then if they go over the top, you got the teams yelling and screaming, especially a big team like the Red Sox. Very tricky spot for EEI management. What's your take on that for well, a second? I mean, they've been a, they've been a, uh, a, a tremendous source of, of uh, profit for the uh, station. They, they, they were number one, and, and uh, the, this has been going on for quite some time, and we, you know how important drive time is in radio, and they, they, uh, they have, have been a, a leader, if not number one or two, the one or two in the market, all the books for many years now. So uh, this is a big question, but they hired them to be themselves, and if they change and they just want to talk pure sports, if they're instructed to talk pure sports, they're capable easily, both of them. They're very bright, and they know their sports. Uh, they can do that. Uh, they, uh, we'll see if they want to, and, and, and how will that sell uh, uh, to their audience that got used to, uh, you know, their core audience that got used to the other approach to things that will be expecting them to comment on political matters uh, or social matters. Uh, and, and we'll see. It's going to be a profound change. But, I mean, let's, I, I think that I speak for many here in Boston who are standing on the side watching this. When I say that they, uh, EEI profited them by being them for a long time, and uh, all of a sudden uh, the backlash is hit, and 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 um, you know uh, be, now they're going to have to pay. They're paying a and price. EI is, and EI is not taking to having their back. Well, well, good job, Bob. Excellent update. Keep up the good work. I appreciate right, it today. Good, Chris. Bye bye. Very good. So this is really Jerry and uh, Minahan. Uh, wow, I learned something there. Four o'clock, one o'clock in the West. Come on.